These are rocks. This is a set. We can put our rocks into our set. How this ties into abstract algebra, we will go over after the intro. I am on a quest to understand and master high level mathematics. I tried university to get this done, but it wasn't the answer. And so I've left it to venture out on my own to find the knowledge I desire. Self-educating. Using whatever resources I can find, documenting my journey as I go in order to help you in yours. The mountain is high and the path is long. So let's get to climbing. Quick disclaimer before I start. There's many ways to go up this mountain. This is only one of them, and it's a kind of a janky way at that. It's not very rigorous, but we're trying to give an intuitive approach. So take this with a grain of salt, and if it's confusing you, just don't get d discouraged. There's many ways up the mountain. I personally have dealt with a lot of mathematical discouragement. I'm telling you, it's usually lying to you. Usually there's a way of under understanding it, and just time needle for and you'll understand it. Have courage in your mathematical endeavors, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Things. We have rocks. And we put them in a set. So it's our set, and we got these boom, bing, bop. So higher mathematics, a concept that I was very, took a long time for me to get, is that higher mathematics starts thingifying things. So you start just trying to thingify stuff. You're trying to take, for example, a function. So like a function is like a very complicated, like you have a set and you have arrows going from that set to another set and it's a whole thing. Complicated, blah, right? But you're, you're just saying, okay, in my head, I literally visualize it like you're putting brackets around it. You're like kind of drawing a circle around it and you're saying, Thing, just one thing. We're just talking about this thing. So you're not saying this complicated idea, you're not diving into it, you're just saying the yeah, thing. And then you can talk about the set of all real valued functions from the real numbers to the real numbers. That confused me oh so bad when I was first reading. Oh, that was in Linear Algebra Done Right by uh, Sheldon Axler. That confused me for a long time. I started to get it. It's just we're thingifying stuff. Just imagine brackets, got this complicated thing, schmoop, now it's a thing. And so we got thing, thing, thing. We put it all in a set. <clears throat> Abstract algebra, the question that abstract algebra is asking, right? So we have we have the set and we have some stuff in it. And this is abstract algebra, so it's a little abstract. The problem with abstract algebra, as a side note, it's hard to get a concrete example because it is abstract algebra and it was made in the 1800s and it was abstracted from mathematical fields. So it wasn't abstract, it wasn't looking out in the real world and just boop, here's math. So we have a ton of examples as to where it comes from. It's like, okay, real world, math, abstract algebra. So it makes sense if you have all these maths, but it's also a hard approach. It's just, it kind of came about, it's just tough to have real world examples. So the progression of how it came to be does make sense. It just takes a while of learning mathematical history and stuff. That's still ongoing. Anyway, the question abstract algebra asks is, you have some stuff. What happens when we take two of these things, schmoop them together? What comes out? That's abstract algebra. You have, you have some stuff and you say, this is like rock one, rock two, rock three. What happens when we combine rock one and rock two? And pretend these are special rocks. You can like schmoop them together and then another rock comes out, like one rock instead of, it's not like two rocks now. So bloop. think of like paints. Paints is another good example. You take two paints, you mix them together. One paint comes out. So you have two things, you put them together. One new thing comes out. Well, not a new thing per se. There is algebras, but this isn't true. But as far as I can tell, and in all the books I've seen, when you combine them together, the thing that comes out needs to also be one of the things. So if you're, if you're operating like a set of rocks and you combine two of the rocks together, the thing that comes out needs to be also one of those rocks. I mean, it could even be this one. Like you combine these two together and then what comes out, just, to not, just pretend he's like schmooped together to form one rock. I'm yeah, it's not the greatest example. But you shroom together and then this could be the rock that comes out. It could just go back to itself. But anyway, it has to be within, it has to be one of the, one of the rocks. So if you take two, boom, put them together. What comes out? That's the question. You're combining things, items, you're schmooping together. What's coming out? Uh, what color do we want here? Let's go blue. Yeah. I need a black pen, but right now we're working with blue. So uh, I'm gonna get annoyed with moving these rocks around. So, uh, and this is a classic, classic mathematical thing to do. We're, we are just gonna call this rock, rock one, rock two, rock 
three. And then we can just get rid of these. I'll, I'll leave these. I'll leave these at the top of the screen. So we we want to we want to see what happens, right? The schmooping. We want to see what's going on with the schmooping. So we're gonna go ahead and create a table. And we're just doing. We're just getting quirky. You know, we're just gonna quirk that math table. We're just we're just like you know. We're like all right. Let's just let's just see what's going on. Let's just see what's happening. So we got we're gonna, we're gonna create, go ahead and create a table, right? Because we want to see what happens when we combine the rocks together. And also order matters. So we're gonna have to do every possible combination. So uh, you know, R1 combined with R2 might be different than R2 combined with R1. In our this is just we're getting quirky. We're just getting we're just getting crazy. And so we're gonna go R1. R2, R3, R1. We're just coming up with a table. We're just trying to come up with some way to represent what happens when we combine all these items, right? Okay. And so in, in these, this is just like what happens when you go R1 combined with R2. I think of it like because order does matter, unfortunately, so it's not as simple. What you're gonna what you're gonna do is think like R1 combined with R2. I think this is R1, right? It's like on top, and then I think of R2 combined with R1, it's like it's on top. So they might be different things. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they just, they're like paint and it doesn't matter what order you put them in, but sometimes it's gonna matter if it's R1 on top or R2 on top, it'll matter. And so now we have every possible combination. So this this is like, this box right here means R2 on top, R1, what happens there. And we can fill this in however we want really here. So I'm just gonna arbitrarily fill it in. But all, the only rules are we, they need to be, the things in these boxes need to be one of the R1, R2, R3. So I'll fast forward this. Hey there, Future Tucker here. Just a quick interjection. As I was editing this video, I realized it might be a little confusing with the notation, so I just wanted to go over it a little bit better. So with this chart, what we're doing really at the end of the day is we are combining elements, right, of a set. We're taking things and we're schmooting together. And we're seeing what comes out. And we want a visual way to represent every possible combination of the combination of things. Every possible schmooping, we want to have some way to write that down. And so we just, we're like, hmm, we ponder, we think, we contemplate, and we come up with this thing. It's just a, just a way of representing every possible schmooping and writing it down. So this box is gonna be rock three combined with rock one. When you take rock three and combine it with rock one, that goes here. Or you take rock three and you put it on top of rock one, that is what comes out here. And then over here, this is what happens when you take rock one and put it on top of rock three and schmoop together. So order does matter. It's unfortunate. That's why concrete example is really difficult because it gets very hairy, but the idea is there. The way I think about it is, is as if you're a scientist and you're combining stuff in a lab, say it's like chemicals or I don't know, rocks. Let's pretend there's rocks and it's special magic rocks so they do some stuff. And so you're experimenting, you have these rocks laid out and you want to see what happens when you combine them. And then you want to come up with a way of recording what happens when they do because you're a scientist. So this is the chart you come up with. When you take rock three, you put it on top of rock one and what pops out, you put that thing here and you, you get rock two and you put it on top of rock one and you're shooting together and then there's special rocks remember so they pop out another rock one rock that goes here you take rock two and you put it with another rock two because you're allowed to do that because these are i don't know the, the rocks the rock example kind of falls apart at some point but you get the idea you take rock two you combine it with rock two put rock two on top of rock two that goes here, you take rock three, you put it on top of rock three, that goes here, etc, etc. You can fill this in, you just have to combine every possible combination in every order. That fills out this whole thing. So this is just a way of representing every possible combination of the elements of what you're dealing with. All right, back to the video. And so there you go. I mean, you go create your own here. Uh, you know, you can make them literally whatever you want, but uh, this is what an out, this is it. So if someone says, what what is an algebra? This is an algebra. These can be infinitely long. They can be the set of all people in the country of Zimbabwe. They can be literally whatever, um, but we're just questioning, you have some items in a set, you have some things, right? Things in a set. And the question is, what happens when we combine those things, right? What, what's going on? We take two of these things and we combine them together. What pops out? Abstract algebra. Okay, now I want to go on for about an hour because there's like so much stuff I'm missing here, but I gotta make these short, so that's gonna be it. But groups, if you're wondering what groups are, a special case of that, you have some items, how do they combine, but there's some particular rules on how you can combine them. Rings are, you get two different operations, and I can't really define rings that well because I'm still kind of learning what's going on there, but I'm pretty sure you take two different ways of combining them. And they'll go over how to, there's a way of writing the combination, so when you write R1 and R2, you go, I don't want to have to like, I don't want to have to take two rocks and go like, hey, when I combine this rock with this rock, what happens. So there's a symbol for how we combine them. So you have to come up with some sort of symbol to write down like rock one combined with a rock two. And that symbol, you can come up with arbitrarily ones. You can come up with whatever symbol you want really to say like R1 with R2, but damn it. A lot of the time in textbooks, it's gonna be that like star. It's gonna be that puppy right there. And this just means you just put like something here and something here. And this symbol, you read it as R1 composed with R2.
or Jack composed with Jill, or Bob composed with the concept of time. Literally just thingify things and then this is the composition. You put them together and poop comes out. Order matters and oh, and also, okay. It's gonna take a while to edit. Still, when you're drawing an algebra, you put the symbol for how they combine right here. So you just put, this is the, the thing you put in between two items when you're combining them and you just put it up here just for notational sake. Yeah, abstract algebra. Still learning this field, it's gonna be a little janky, just kind of stream of consciousness, what's going on in abstract algebra right now for me. And without further ado, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of Autodidact Teaches Stuff. <laughs> This episode of Pondering with Autodidacts. Uh, what else would I call this? Episode of Abstract Algebra in the Woods. Yeah, this, that's going to conclude this episode of Abstract Algebra in the Woods. I have been your host, Autodidact. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Turn on the post notifications. I'm supposed to say that. And without further ado, take it easy. I love you. Godspeed. And I will see you in the next one, which is going to be tomorrow.